What's going on everybody? So today I want to talk about Ancient Altar and how to get the most value in terms of summons from this game mode, as well as if you're a newer slash mid game player and you're still trying to work your way through all the difficulties, I want to be going through some team comps and things to think about there as well. Of course, if you just care about the rewards and how to kind of get the most summons, I'll leave timestamps and it'll be like rewards or something like that and you can go there. But First things first, let's talk about this game mode and go over a couple of the team comps and some strategies with this. Now, this is honestly isn't super difficult. And in fact, even if you're free to play, you should, if you're playing every day, that is, and you're kind of dedicated to the game, be able to beat this within month, month and a half or so. Um, depends on how lucky you get, of course. But this is pretty straightforward because you really only need to kind of handle one, uh, well, I should say about two and maybe a little bit of the third fight. You don't actually need three teams for this one. Uh, but first thing you have to mention is that there are different difficulties, but generally speaking, all the difficulties are essentially the same. It's just that the numbers are uh, higher, meaning the damage is higher. The amount of damage that you need to do is higher. Um, the HP bar is higher, etc. So when you're building a team comp uh, and you're trying to figure out, okay, I'm not on hard or I'm on normal, or I'm not on hell. Well, doesn't really matter because the same logic applies now with this fight the strategy generally has you fighting three separate fights with teams of five with different mechanics and the way these first two fights work in fact if i head into the battle here the first two fights determine how much diff more difficult the last fight will be so you can see here for each bar of hp lost it will weaken the skills of the final boss. And this is very, very important. Now, what skills is it gonna weaken? Well, if we click here, we can see the different skills that we're gonna be able to weaken. First one is gonna be the Soul Shock, uh, and the second one's gonna be the Shield. You'll see here, um, when you look, uh, the damage that you're able to kind of deal with these skills, the boss, that is, um, decreases. But, first thing, this second fight is the priority by far. In fact, I would argue that you can't even really do the third boss fight unless you truly get this second boss fight crushed uh, or close to beaten. Why? Because this skill uh, gives your boss or, or whatever character you're fighting, whether it's the second boss or the main boss, a shield. And when you're talking about the main boss, it's 6% of their max HP. And keep in mind that the max HP is not light okay um we're considering like over a hundred million hp here on this final boss you see 103.7 million so you absolutely need to deal with this second fight and the first fight yes it's going to help you reduce the damage that you take on the final boss but this one's significantly less important uh comparatively to that second fight in fact you could pretty much completely ignore it now let's consider what we need to beat or do to beat this boss first one the first demon here is going to require AOE DPS. So you're going to need to bring in people that could either, um, you know, hit multiple targets or just do a co like a big circle, circular AOE. Why? Well, because this summon Hellhounds starts and these will absolutely destroy the members of your team. But actually, even more so than this, although the focus should be, you know, AOE units, the boss itself does a massive amount of damage. And so an early game strategy for this one is to use someone that has AOE damage but can keep themselves alive and heal them through the fight a little bit. And what you'll notice here is when I was doing this, and I haven't changed it since literally I beat it. So this is the same team comp that I used when I first beat Ancient Altar, and I have never changed it. Why? Because Leo literally carried the whole fight for me. He can go ahead and remove a couple HP bars off the boss and then live through the summons. And that's all you need because you just need to reduce the damage that the boss deals a little bit in order for this fight to be worthwhile. A couple of the characters that are going to find are super, super useful. People like Northion, people like Leo are going to be the absolute best. Um, and then after that, you know, uh, I wouldn't recommend using any summoner or any hunter or good single turret damage dealer. Definitely don't do that. But you could use some like Ravenna. You could use someone like, um, you know, some of the tanks like Wamagon Pandemonium or some of the like more niche uh, AOE units. I would not necessarily use a healer 
because you don't actually need to sustain this fight at all. Um, you could just run in and ignore the damage and hopefully you have Leo or Northeon so that way you could just sustain through it on them. If you don't have one of those characters and you need to get through a couple health bars, then you can use a healer, but I'd recommend keeping your better healers for the other fights because they're more important. The second fight is pretty simplistic, okay? Um, they have a couple of basic mechanics, but essentially they have the shield, which is why you have to kill it. So you need a lot more damage than that first fight, even though that first fight doesn't necessarily matter. But this second skill prioritize summons, which means we're gonna be using a summon comp. And actually a lot of your elite summon units are perfect for this. And in fact, you can even see me using Liren here because um, that was what I was using because I didn't have the other healers. Like Mizrani wasn't in my team. Um, Miranda wasn't in, in the game. Vada wasn't in the game. So I was using like Serena and I was using um, Liren. So you could use Liren. I recommend some sort of AOE healer. Mizrani works particularly well in that slot. Um, Generally speaking though, you just run summon units, okay? Um, you just run summon units, you're gonna go through and you're gonna bring in things like Kalaza, Senway, Daniel, Skewer and Hattie. In this particular fight, Skewer and Hattie and Daniel are really, really good. Because Skewer and Hattie will not die and actually is uh, somewhat tankier than your other summon units and can actually tank some of the boss's hits even earlier on in the game, which is pretty useful. If you don't have the ability to tank some of those hits, uh, then you can run some sort of tankier frontliner, like a actual tank, like Wamagon Pandemonium, um, or you can just run in with like a Vanguard, uh, or use your healer, like Leer it up in the front here, to tank it as well. You have a couple of options. But Sorverly, Anpu, if you have the combo, that would work as well. Anpu, obviously with more summoners, uh, you're gonna get some extreme value there. So. Definitely, definitely many options, but generally speaking, just run a group of summoners and you'll be totally fine with this one. Then we come to the final boss and you'll notice it's two people, my Emma and Serena. That's because Serena was the one that I had before I had any of the other healers. Now, this one gets a lot more complicated. It has the two, you know, uh, skills from the earlier boss fights, but also every 30 seconds, it starts to scale. Uh, it's gonna get way stronger. And then also it's gonna unlock additional abilities. You can see here, um, it has the Hellgate, which is gonna increase his attack and damage taken, the Seal of Death, which just nukes someone, the Hell Slam, which does an AOE hit and reduces attack, and then the Blood Beetle that deals damage to all enemies. Uh, and if you kill it, it restores full energy. So a few things to consider. If you're gonna play on manual, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to target those Blood Beetles so you can go ahead and restore full energy, which is pretty nice. Um, but, if you're not, don't worry about it. Some of the characters will automatically target um, when they come in. You're gonna wanna run a healer in this one. I recommend one healer uh, for this one and team two. Put your best squad members in this team. Generally speaking, the best single target damage dealers are gonna be your hunters. And so Emma, um, Riseris, uh, Rebecca, uh, those characters are going to be exceptionally, exceptionally good. And in fact, if you're early game, you probably have some elites or you don't have all the triple S's unlocked, which means people like Taylor up here, um, people like Bot Mark II are going to be exceptionally good. And, and those are the ones you're going to want to go for. Part of that, there's some fireworks out. It's 4th of July, guys. <laughs> um, but the other characters you could kind of go into are some of the assassins like Dominic and Rickert particularly because they have very good single turret damage but it really depends on you know kind of what you're going for um, and you might be wondering why do I have two members of the team well we'll go over that you know part of it when we talk about the rewards um, again just focus on single turret damage and being able to sustain through the fight it really isn't too tricky you're just going to want high dps um, and if you have your healer you should be able to survive it's really not that complicated but i'll show you guys the kind of finished versions of these team comps and what that might look like as an early game player so a quick example of some team compositions in the early to mid game first team literally just leo this is what i did uh to beat ancient altar originally um and i just stuck whoever i had spare in the back just to do a little bit of extra damage use some commander and prototypes uh, that work with leo second team this is probably what you're going to be ending up with. Uh, Daniel, Kalaza, Senway, Mazrani are pretty much guaranteed. Skewer and Hattie and may not be someone that you have. Um, and if you don't and you have someone like Anpu, it's totally fine to swap these two around. And then 
button yourself an Anpu in this one as well. Team three, or the main boss team, you're gonna want four, generally speaking, hunters, uh, because these are the easiest ones to invest in, because Bot Mark II Taylor are exceptionally good, and they will be pretty much completely free to play um, and be immortalized very, very quickly within the game. You have Miranda, she's gonna be the best healer for this, um, and she could also act as your pseudo tank, and then also give you extra damage for your other hunters. But you might have noticed that I had two people in the team before. Why is that? Well, that's what we have to talk about the actual reward system of this game mode. The reason why it's super easy to beat this is because you actually don't have to beat it. Um, generally speaking, when you're going through and you're trying to figure out, hey, um, how do I go through and get 103 million damage on this? That's kind of overwhelming. Realistically, you kind of only need about 36 million um, because you actually prefer to do the final difficulty and multiple attempts. To explain this a little bit more, the way rewards work, you have two structures, one the challenge rewards and then two the milestone rewards, which is pretty important, okay? And the way this works is when you beat an entire boss, you get the milestone reward. And for normal, hard, and hell, you're going to be able to get two times of whatever milestone reward you get to. So let's say you beat all of them, well, you get level four for however many you do, okay? Which is pretty important. After you do an attempt, however, you get the rewards on the right-hand side. And you might notice that you can only get um, the maximum rewards at 15 million. So as soon as you reach 15 million in one attempt, you get the maximum potential rewards out of the hell boss, which is pretty massive, okay? And so what you prefer to do is actually do the hell boss three attempts in a row because if you get let's say 36 million well guess what you're going to be getting the max rewards out of the hell boss and what you'll notice is as you go lower and lower the rewards go lower and lower in fact even on these lower stages you'll see here um, that i'm not even getting legendary gear anymore and so it is actually way more efficient to not even do easy or novice difficulty. Now you might notice I've done novice or easy difficulty, and that is because it is way harder for me to find a comp that can, that only does one uh, or is able to beat the boss in three go arounds. Um, it's hard for me to find the damage low enough to do that. And so I keep it easy for myself and just beat it in two attempts. But what you'll notice here is the easy final milestone, you don't double up on this. So you get, let's say two to three limited cards and you get three to four advanced recruitment cards. Okay, that's really not that much. Compare that to the hell difficulty here. You're gonna get one to three limited recruitment cards, one to two advanced recruitment cards, and then some gems and a chance at legendary gear. Easy at the milestone also doesn't give you any diamonds. So generally speaking, because you can actually pseudo purchase limited cards and red runes um, with the fatty's treasure, you can sometimes find a pack that gets limited recruitment cards in there. And you can also buy mythic runes with diamonds. It is almost always better to just do normal, hard, and then do three attempts on hell difficulty. You're gonna get more gear. You're gonna get more value in terms of diamonds and summons. Um, and it's just gonna work out a little bit better for you. Technically, if you wanted to be very, very specific about it, if you're just looking at the recruitment cards and you're not looking at the potential for diamonds to pick up recruitment cards or whatever, easy um, with the milestone reward can oftentimes net you one additional one because you can see here it's a minimum two, whereas the attempt for hell difficulty is minimum one. Um, so if you're trying to figure out which, which one you want to go for, uh, if you want to try to beat like easy, normal, hard, hell, and then do it in two attempts, then you could sometimes come away with a little bit more recruitment cards. But generally speaking, as I mentioned, with the diamonds, you'll always come on top um, with hell difficulty in three attempts. So it's part of the reason why I say this game mode is very, very easy. It's because you don't even, and you're not, encouraged to even beat it. You don't want to beat it, actually. <laughs> the later you get in the game and the more developed you are, actually, the more complicated it becomes to get better rewards out of this, which is really stupid. So if they add a new game mode um, or a new difficulty to this, I'd love it. And I really hope that um, 
maybe they keep the temps the same and you're gonna go through and uh i don't know allow us to do the same highest difficulty over and over again and repeat that or something because right now the way it's currently designed doesn't make much sense but hopefully this was helpful for you all i know that this could be somewhat difficult sometimes and if you're a newer player hopefully this was helpful you guys got to see all the team comps and some of the explanation behind it um it's kind of hard for me to say what gear level you need and what like specific team comps you need because again we're like i don't know eight months past when i seven months past when i actually beat this and i remember beating it before i even immortalized anyone um which is pretty crazy so i'm i think i'm not 100 percent sure on that one um, i might have immortalized some elites but i had not immortalized any triple s's but if you have emma you have some of the hunter elites you should be totally fine thanks for watching if you guys enjoyed leave a like on the video and uh i'll see you all in the next one <laughs>